Yep. It's your boy, New Orbit, aka Master Orby, live and direct. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. The title of this video is What is Condemnation? Yes, this is a topic that my spirit has been pressing on my spirit to talk about. It. So, what is condemnation? We're going to look what this word is up and we're going to look at the scriptures and we're going we're gonna to explain the scriptures and we're going to explain it nigga man style like I always do. Before we start this video, got to make my disclaimers. If you are not into the scriptures, not into the Bible, this is not a video for your nigga ass. If you are a sensitive brother or sister and you do not like adulterated content with adulterated words, it's not a video for your sorry sensitive ass. And we're going to get into this. So, condemnation is a noun, okay? The expression of a very strong disapproval, censure. The action of condemning someone to punishment, sentence. All right? So it means disapproval. Now, let's look at the black community. Okay? A lot of the black sisters do not like condemnation. And the brothers, they don't like condemnation, but it's not as severe in the brothers as it is in the sisters. And this is something that's been pressing on my spirit, so I've got to talk about this. We're going to do, we're going to get into the Bible verses of condemnation. Right? So, you got your Bibles. Get your, you get your Bibles, we're going to break it down, nigga man style. All right. In Romans 8, verse 1, right? It says, there is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are now in Christ Jesus. If you are born again, you accepted Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior, then you are dead to the flesh. But how is this possible? Well, it's a process. See, when you accept God in your life, you got baptized by the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. So the life that you once lived is now in Christ. So Christ lives in you. A Christ abides in you. See, we are spiritually dead because we live in the law. The law is the sin. Sin, the wages of sin is what? Death. So once we are still living in our fleshly natures, we accepted the flesh, we reject God, then our condemnation is a sentence a disapproval god's not going to accept the flesh because the flesh is at opposition with the spirit you feel what i'm saying the two are opposition to each other so if you are not born again you are condemned. period i know you niggas don't want to accept that shit, but this is what the word of the most high says condemnation is there is there now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? And then from eight, um, Romans 8, verse 1 through 39, it says, Therefore, this condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free, right? In Christ Jesus, from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. So Christ did something that the flesh could not do. Him coming to earth, dying on the cross for our sins, being resurrected, he overrode the law of the flesh. He overcome life and death. Right? And um, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. This is very important for you brothers and sisters to understand. If you want to be set free. Your natural nature as a human being it's a fleshly nature. If you're not born again in Christ, you're not born of the Holy Spirit, then you do not put your things on the Spirit. That's just natural. 
correspondence. So if a person is coming on this channel challenging me about the Bible, it's more than likely because you don't have the Holy Spirit. And I explained it in this video. The only way you can have the Ruha HaKadish, the Holy Spirit, is by being baptized and accepting Christ in your life. Because outside of Christ, there is no life. It's death. And if you want that internal, immortal body, glorious body, because we're going to do this on another video, is you are going to do things of the flesh. Your heart desires things of the flesh. Your heart desires malice. Your heart desires envy. Your heart desires killing people, lust, all the different temptations. That's what you are by because you're not born again. Now, what's the difference between somebody who's born again and somebody who's not born again? Somebody who's born again, they have the ruha. Doesn't mean that they struggle with the flesh, but they have the grace and the mercy from the Most High to live the righteous life because if Christ was able to do it in sinful flesh, he said his son in the, in the form of sinful flesh to fulfill the law. So this is where Christians get messed up and they get lost at it because they go to churches that talk about um, once saved, always saved. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or Yeshua HaMashiach, right? You got baptized. You are born again into the kingdom. Your spirit is born again. But what happened to your flesh and your soul? They're not born again. They're still, you have to free your soul from the flesh. And the only way that you will free your soul from the flesh is when you die. So even if you are born again, you still have to struggle with the flesh. Now you have the power to subdue the flesh, to live righteous, and to fulfill the law in your fleshly body. Just like how Christ, when he came down, he fulfilled the law of what the Father commanded him to do. When you have grace in your life, it's not for you to continue sinning. It's for you to conquer and overcome the sin nature, which is the Adamic nature. Because it's the Adamic nature that condemns you to hell. So all of us down here, we have the Adamic nature. We still have the corrupted nature, but when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are born again in your spirit man. Your spirit man is alive. Now you have a fighting chance to redeem yourself. Because it says in the next scripture, it says to work out your salvation, fear, and trembling. I'm going to keep it real, my people. The more you keep adhering and hardening your hearts to the commandments of the Most High, keep thinking that this book is all is about white people and oppressing our black people and keeping us in slavery, you are already in slavery. Your physical slavery is only a side effect of your disobedience to the Most High. Read Deuteronomy, read Leviticus, read Exodus. Black people, your slavery has been a spiritual slavery first before it was a physical slavery. Because you are a slave to idols. Because you are a slave to other deities other than the Most High. God has made you a slave to white men. I know you niggas hate to hear that, but that's the goddamn truth. Read your scriptures. We are the Hebrew Israelites. Read the Apocrypha. You are condemning yourself. No one is not condemning you. You're condemning yourself. That's your own nature. You want to overcome this sinful nature? Get born again. You want to overcome your sinful nature? Get Christ in your life. Have a personal relationship with the Most High. Allow the Most High to guide you into all the truth. I told you guys in a lot of my videos, I've been in the occult. I dealt with the occult. So I know what that life is about. And I can tell you, because I'm dealing with that and I'm dealing with Christ, I can tell you there's two different lifestyles. And I'm going to be honest with you. You cannot live both lifestyles. 
You cannot serve God and eat at the table of devils. So this is where you're going to have to make a decision. And that decision is based on you. It's not based on God. God has already given you the kingdom. He said, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added on to you. He's giving you a command. He said, the first seek God and his kingdom. You must seek him in his word. If you don't have the desire to seek him, it's because God hasn't called you to him. No one doesn't seek him out unless they have the desire in their heart to do so. If you are dealing with the flesh, then you don't have no desire to serve the spirit. Because God is a spirit. And what does it say in the scripture? It says to worship God is to worship God in spirit, in truth. Let's go to another verse, right? It says, Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So accepting Christ is a free gift from God, which is eternal life. You get, the, you get to know that you, are, you have a, 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 a saving chance. You, the human race, has a chance to be seen from your ignorance. That gift is eternal life through Christ who laid down the groundwork while he was on earth. He has set up the bank account. It's called everlasting life. He said, I will prepare a kingdom for you, right? So that kingdom is our kingdom that we will rule when Christ returns. You guys don't want to accept that. That is fine. For those who do accept that and do believe that, receive the Holy Spirit. They now have a fighting chance of being redeemed. Just because you have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you're going to be redeemed. So when Christians say, once saved, always saved, that's a cop-out of not putting in the work for God. God will not give you his Holy Spirit for you to just keep sinning. He's not going to give you his Holy Spirit for you to just not do anything and just depend on God. God did his part. He wants you to do your part. He said, I have given you the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you niggas. Right? And He's giving us the keys to the kingdom. But God's not going to open the door for you niggas. If he gave us the keys to the kingdom, it's up to you to seek the kingdom, find the kingdom, find the door, open the door, and walk through the door. He's giving you the keys. It's like somebody that died, left the will in your name, and says, hey, this is all the stuff that I need you to do in order for you to obtain this will. So basically, that's what the Bible is. A way of how to obtain the will of God for our lives. If you're accustomed and you're, and you're comfortable with your lifestyle and how you live, have at it. If you feel there's nothing more other than this life, there's no such thing as life and death, at it. You are entitled to believe whatever you want to believe. But I want to believe in the most high because the most high is keeping it real. You feel what I'm saying? And if he's given us a chance to redeem ourselves, you don't want to fall into condemnation. Now, I'm not saying you're perfect. We're going to be fighting with the flesh and we're going to fight with sin. We're going to fight with temptations. But with the Holy Spirit, the Ruha, he gives us a chance to fight and subdue the flesh. It's spiritual warfare. The desire. That's why you go on a prayer and you fast. You pray and you fast. Because certain demons can't come out of people. Certain people can't believe, can't be delivered unless they pray and they fast. Praying and saying you could cast out demons. Oh, I, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That's not going to work. If you don't have the anointing, if you don't have the the, the Holy Spirit, you don't have 
it's, it's grace on your life, then you ain't casting out shit. Demons are not phased by you. And that's what's going on with this black community. You guys in church, y'all, y'all, y'all apostles and, 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 and prophets, y'all ain't casting out these sick spirits out of these people. These people are going into your churches and they're getting fucked up even more. Let's keep it a buck, man. How much motherfucking chicks that go up in niggas' churches and, and have sex with the pastor and all that? Supposed to be saved and supposed to, the pastor's supposed to deliver these women from their demons. No, he's passing on his demons to those girls. Those girls are passing on their demons onto him. It's a transference of demons. There ain't no transference of no Holy Spirit. There ain't no Holy Spirit in no church. Holy Spirit is in his word. He said, defy me, he said, defy me in my word. I understand his concept of what he's talking about and coming back to my church. The church is talking about who believe in God and who have a, a royal and faithful life. All these churches that y'all niggas going to, y'all going to Mega Million Church, T.D. Jakes and all these dudes, these dudes are robbing you. These dudes are like, leading you down the, uh, the broad way of destruction instead of the straight and narrow. Because anybody that promotes homosexuality, promote sin in their church and saying that that is the normal thing when they know that the scriptures do not talk about that and you're supposed to be a goddamn pastor, you're condemned. Don't come at me and say I'm cursing. I know the scriptures. I know I'm unholy. I know that I'm not righteous and I am not fit for the kingdom of God. But you know, God still chooses a guy like me to preach this word. Why? Because I ain't trying to toot my own horn. I ain't trying to say I'm holy in doubt. He just wants somebody to spread the gospel. That's what he said. I believe, I understand, and I have the Holy Spirit because I accepted God in my life when I got back. And that's the, that's, that's the side effects of accepting the Holy Spirit. You're going to do the will of the Father. And, I, and regardless of how I live, I choose to do the will of God. See, a lot of people are called to do prophetic ministries. A lot of people are called to do the will of God, but they ignore the call. They choose to do the things of the flesh. I choose to do the things of God because I want everlasting life. I preach the gospel about things that I might be condemned about in my own self. I talk about sex. I tell you that you tell guys about sex at the same time. I know that this message is for me too. Because I, I know I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to get right with God. I am not perfect. So you brothers who are living it big, you got churches, you got followers, you got a congregation, and you're not teaching about sin and, and, and teaching about the kingdom of God, all you guys are just doing is talking about prosperity, how to get money, and how to sow tithes and offering. If that's the only thing you're talking about, and you're not talking about getting your soul right with God, living with the commandments and statutes of the Most High, you are a fucking false prophet. Saying we got a lot of those, you know. Because let me say this. Let me say this to y'all. Romans three twenty three. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So anybody coming in here talking about they righteous and holy and thou, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of the God. That includes me. So I don't come on my platform to act like I'm better than you. I just come here to tell a message to you. I don't come here to say I'm better than you. I come here to tell you a message. And that message is get your ass right. God is coming back for a church, which is you, and it better not have any spot or blemish or wrinkle, because if you do find that in your garment, which is your light body, which is your astral body, which is your true self, your spiritual man, if you have spot or wrinkle or blemish on your spirit man, when he comes back for his church, you are not leaving this fucking place. You will be here with the rest of niggas having to fight the war, 
demons and plaguing and invading this earth. Because that's what's happening. If you if, if you think I'm bullshitting, look at all your movies. All your movies like Godzilla, movies like Independence Day, movies like 2020 and all this other extra shit about the time, stopping time, apocalyptic disasters, doomsday. So it's talking about what's going to happen in the end times. We in end times. Get your ass to right. Get your ass together. Stop listening to false prophets. Stop listening to everybody who you think is a man of God or a woman of God and listen to the Holy Spirit. We are just men. We make mistakes. We have our own vices to deal with. I never come on here saying that I'm holy and down and that I don't struggle with shit. All of us do. That's why you need the Holy Spirit so you can get right in your spirit. And that when God comes back for his church, he, he has a church and you guys are well right with God. You have oil in your lap, like the virgins that had oil in their lap. He's going to come back. You don't know when he's coming back. You don't know. He says he's coming like a thief in the night. You don't know when he's coming for you. So you always want to be prepared. You always want to be on point. Keeping it real. Repent. Forgive your brothers and sisters. Live by the Holy Spirit. Live. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys are worrying too much about What's on social media? You heard about who's going to be the next president? Who's got this new fashion? Who's doing this challenge? All of that is distracting you from your salvation. I'm not interested in building a black community. I'm interested in the community that God has in store for all of us. All of us when he comes back. Because by establishing a new kingdom, on earth is Christ. And the Hebrew Israelites, which is our black people, we will see that day if you are right with God. Because you can say you're a Hebrew Israelite, but if you ain't right with God and you don't have a, a personal relationship with God, then you ain't seeing that day. You will see judgment, but you ain't going to see that glorious day. You're going to be a nigga that's saying why he left me behind. Just like how when he was the Noah Ark. Noah was warning people for 120 years. He was preaching on the earth while he was building the ark for God. And when the day he finished building that ark and God told him to go inside of the ark, everybody's trying to get in the ark. It was too late. There's nothing new under the sun. So just like how it says in the last days, it will be just like how it was in the days of Noah. Just think about God coming back for his church, line those two synchronicities up. Noah building his ark. Jesus Christ coming back for his church. We are the church. We need to get right. If you got the messengers, we are symbolic of Noah. You are a message. So you can look at me and say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a symbolic messenger, like just like Noah. And to tell you, niggas, get right. Get right. But y'all sitting here laughing at me because I'm building an ark. You, you getting mad at me because uh, you niggas, yo, Christ is coming back. Get yourself right. I know that you live in sin. I'm living in sin too. But we gotta get this shit together. Cause if you wanna see, you wanna see better days. You understand? You gotta, you gotta do your part. You have free will. You have free choice. You choose to live the life that you live. You can't get mad at nobody for that. You can't. I can't get mad at nobody for my lifestyle and how I live. See, that's what I'm saying. Who's want to hold all these fucking titles, but y'all don't want to take accountability for your actions. Women, y'all like to say, oh, this is our pussy, right? And I, I could give my pussy to whoever the fuck I want. I'm put a man. I have rights. But when you are pregnant or you catch an STD or shit ain't going well for you, then you want to play Oh, I'm, I'm a victim. I told you it was equal to a man. I told that you said you could do whatever you want. 
So deal with the consequences. That's condemnation. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You guys can't say, oh, yo, we gods, man. Yo, fuck the white man. Look at, look at that dude from um, ASAP a a Rocky. He talk all that shit about, yo, he don't, he disown black people. Oh, that got nothing to do with me. I can't relate to that. Well, guess what, nigga? We can't relate to you being in a, in another country in a fucking jail cell. You feel what I'm saying? We can't, we can't, we can't relate to that. Cause I'm not on that level. I'm not a celebrity. I don't know those, those pains you're experiencing behind bars, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? So watch your mouth, watch your words, watch what you say, because it will come back and bite you in your ass. Y'all niggas are lawless fucking creatures. Yeah, I said it. I don't care. You are lawless fucking creatures. You are hard of hearing. You're stubborn as fuck. You're arrogant as fuck. You act like everything revolves around you. I never seen a race of fucking people that feel so entitled to shit that they feel they own based on the backs of their ancestors, which it was your ancestors who paved the way for you. You didn't really have to do shit, but just exist. You're given salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ and you still wouldn't accept it because you're so fucking entitled. Woo to you. Woe to you, niggas. The today's today's generation. Look, let me drink my boy, man. Today's generation of niggas don't got no fucking principles whatsoever. Niggas, oh my God, you lucky I'm just keeping it 100 with you. I'm not your regular preacher. You know what I'm saying? I'm cursing my videos because I got to reach the people. See, if I come with that nice soft, nice, soft talking, like, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you niggas are not listening to that. You niggas need hard teaching. You need hard beatings. You need to get beat the fuck up so you can realize that this is serious, man. You need the nigga God to come from the sky with fire and chariots to burn you niggas alive for you niggas to realize that even then when he do come, your niggas don't still think it's some government conspiracy shit. That's how niggas is so fucked up in the head. They will still believe that that shit is a government conspiracy. Because the government got your head so wrapped up in conspiracies, you don't know your left hand from your mother right hand. And that's a goddamn shame. You see my face, nigga, I, I, am, I, am, I am washing my hands clean of you niggas. I'm just here to help those niggas. Yes, I said it like a white man. I'm here to help those niggers who believe in Jesus Christ and who wants a personal relation with him and wants to see the light of day, that promised land, that inheritance that what Christ said, when he comes back, he's going to set up a new kingdom. He's going to set up things right. He's going to put us in places of power where we will have power to judge even angels. I can't wait for a glorious day. So if God tells me to do what I need to do, I'm not going to back talk. I ain't going to say nothing that's going to be displeasing. I'm going to shut my flesh up, even though my flesh might say I ain't trying to do that shit. I'm going to do what God tells me to do because I want to see the kingdom. Because this ain't a kingdom. You niggas trying to go to school within a, 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 a prison house. America is a prison house. You niggas are trying to land in a prison house. You niggas are trying to get an education in a prison house. You guys are trying to compete against each other in a 
prison house. You niggas ain't any different from dudes who are actually in a prison house. Just different locations and different environments. But the mindset is still the fucking same. Your mindset ain't any different from a dude that's in jail. You're just on the motherfucking outside. Y'all niggas need to wake up, man. But that, with that, I'm going to just leave it at that. Sorry. No, I've been drinking my Goya. You guys leave your comments in the comment section below. Trolls will be blocked in the lead. And I'll catch you in the next video. Let me pick this up.